Take a look at this. The older the people get, it seems the more distant to the everyday problems young people are. They don't want to work, the birth rate is plummeting, we seem to have a crisis of lonely people between the ages of 19 to 29, and even the global wage seems to be dropping. Take me back to the times where they would whip you if you didn't pay tax on time, am I right? Hmm? What's that? The cost of living has increased dramatically, all while the wages have been badly catching up. The total human population has nearly doubled since the 1980s. We are heading towards already predicted climate crisis, while still suffering from inflation crisis from the numerous conflicts that are still ravaging the supposedly peaceful world the people before us left? Talk about living a privileged life and not knowing how good they had it, am I right? See what I did there? I'll know that all of this negative info on you and then aiming it all on a group. In this case, a generation. From the Wikipedia article on generation, the actual focus on the differences and uniqueness of each age group began in the 19th century due to the massive difference between the population at the time. The main factor in creating this divide is technology. More on that later. The actual main reason this was created? Hey, I'm Thomas. Every single thing you experience, you think, you want, you need is somehow connected to this guy, more exactly to his brain. Fight it, deny it, try to disprove it, all you want. The life you're living right now, basically anywhere on earth, is so far away remote from the actual life you were evolved to live. Every single function your brain has is connected to something that would help you get through the day in the prehistoric times. Anxiety, addiction, curiosity, memes. So what does it explain? Phenomena like religion, philosophy, technology, el racismo, international communities, mustache people, and dumb, stupid, idiot, dumb stuff like eco-terrorism and <sighs> corporate politics. Oh my god, don't even get me started on corporate politics. The human brain is an amazing thing. It is so incredibly curious, it gave itself a name. Yes, you are your own brain and you gave yourself a name. How cool is that? It is trying to survive in every possible way that it knows how. One of the ways it knows that definitely will save its gray and white living experience is living in a group. We've done this our whole existence. That's why the whole idea of anyone being a hermit is so romantic, if not absolutely miserable. You lived in a family. Later, you learned to live in a bigger group, yet you still kept the old groups. We learned to divide ourselves based on gender, color, size, experience and age. I like to focus on this one for now, because the amount of brain cells I have already sacrificed just to put the words how freaking goofy this topic is. Now, there was never a time in the actual history of humankind that older people didn't feel that they were the most valuable member in the group long term speaking. What I mean by this? Old people often think they're better than you. I'm not saying always, okay? If there is one thing I know to never do is to generalize one group. This is 2023, I'm scared to even talk, god damn it. They lived longer, experienced more stuff. By ignoring them, you're basically just making it harder for yourself. Now that was before the 19th century. I'll get there, okay, I'll get there. The old were often pushed into the position of advisors, mostly after leaving their service in the army or after the many travels they endured where they got their experience, which so often happened in the Roman Empire, for example. Well, maybe in the prehistoric times, during the time you were supposed to move to other grounds, the elderly might be slower and not as useful in the field if they got to that age, that is. They often died. Yeah but the knowledge and know-how they carried could possibly be crucial to the vibe. To the vibe? To the tribe, yes. Hell, before the Neolithic Revolution, the main social structure was in the spirit of matriarchy. The oldest woman was in charge. Yes, same as it is with elephants, meerkats and hyenas. But well, they were old. They couldn't lift as much as they would, they couldn't run as much, and well, it's, it's hard to feed a family of working people. How much harder would it be to feed the non-working people as well. The know-how they carried was worth it, 100%. Heh? What is that you're saying? The humans learned to create this thing called electricity? They use it to not work as much and create machinery that is beyond our wildest dreams? All in the span of years that are compared to a second to the overall years of humans on this planet? Surely this will leave no impact on the social and economic structure. It left impact on social and economic structure and like a lot of it. Well, of course, the Industrial Revolution snowballed into things like human rights, 
both women and children and overall workers' rights, vacations, sanitation, and, well, manufacture, but it created new ethical and moral questions. Question of universal healthcare, universal income. How do we take care of our old? How do we take care of our young? Sexuality, religion, nationalism. This thing, <sighs> just look at it, it ruined everything. So we're back at this thing. You know this one, it's everywhere now. If you were to put a person that lived in the 1400s into the 1500s, the borders might change, the ruling class might change, but the technology, there wouldn't be any insanely significant differences. Now, if you were to put a person from the 1900s into 2023, he would go absolutely bonkers. The technology curve got so steep that you can feel the change not in between the generations, like say boomers and smartphones, but within the same generation. The pioneers of modern technology having no clue what the trends are and resorting to actually sit down and learn how stuff works instead of learning it by everyday use. You had to know how a phone worked since you basically have to use it every day. Now, AI technology, you might not use it every day, but you're missing out on so much if you don't educate yourself on that use. Okay, 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 okay. And now to the actual point I'm hinting at. The average life expectancy globally is around 70 years old. What happens if you push it to, let's say, 120? What age do you stop working? What age could you stop working? People that are 100 years old with 70 freaking years of experience are going to be way more valued than the new 20-year-old workforce. Maybe, okay? Literally just speculation, since this theory doesn't take in the fact that, that these people can still die, Lamau. It's just the life expectancy gets longer. My theory is, of course, that history will repeat itself like it does time and time again, and another hateful sentiment will rise again. How you wouldn't dare say a bad word about your grandma, because, oh, that poor old lady, look at her. She gives me advice, so I don't have to go through the bad stuff she went through. Well, not anymore. Grandma is pumping iron at 90 now. I spoke about this earlier, but I can't stress it enough. Racism, sexism, homophobia, and all of those stupid things really have no basis in the human biology. It is a cultural matter. Ageism might not be a full-blown global problem yet, but with life expectancy blowing up, I can only predict one thing. People will get angry at another thing that no one can change. Progress. Now, if we only could return to monkey, this will all go away, I promise. Wait, no, no, hear me out, no.